Life is Strange is a series of games I've had a pretty on-off relationship with. I adore the first one and Before the Storm, maybe even preferring Before the Storm in some aspects, and we'll get to why later. Life is Strange 2, however, never got me. I didn't feel it handled character, setting, tone, or anything in a way that drew me in or engaged me. And I'm sorry to all the fans that like that game. If it got you engaged, that's totally great. However, my opinion on that game doesn't have any real bearing on how I feel towards True Colors, other than I went into this expecting not a lot. Everyone who knows me knows I'm a sucker for character writing. Your plot can be kind of anything if you have characters I can love, but the other way around is sort of whatever to me. So when I realized True Colors was being made by Deck Nine, the guys behind Before the Storm, I knew that I had to at least give it a go. And I'm so glad that I did. Deck Nine writes stories that are propelled by character and introspection. Where Life is Strange 1 did have great characters, its core focus was the main plot, which was riveting. However, I honestly feel True Colors blends plot writing and character writing in a way the original never could, or maybe never tried to. True Colors takes you on a journey of loss and recovery, of home and family, and of isolation and belonging, but in such a way that you don't realize until the very end that's what they've even been doing. Where previous games may have felt in places forced and in your face, True Colors practices subtlety. Perhaps not perfectly and not in all areas, but in ways that matter. So join me as we take a look at how it traverses its core themes and what it did for me on an emotional level in a blindingly special way. Opera GX is the browser made specifically for gamers, and I have to say, it's got a ton of features that I've never seen in any other browser before. If you've ever been playing a game and you've noticed it dropping frames or lagging, it could be caused by your browser. But with Opera GX, this isn't an issue. You can actually limit how much CPU usage or RAM the browser uses, which leaves more power for your games, music, streams, whatever it is you might be doing on your PC. So you're able to keep plenty of tabs open and do multiple things at once without it hurting your PC's performance. Most browsers out there are pretty plain to look at, but Opera GX is visually gorgeous to look at. Everything about this browser is modern and sleek and easy to use. You can choose from their special wallpapers, customizable neon inspired themes and backgrounds, light or dark mode. Another cool feature that I like is the picture in picture mode, which means you can have a YouTube video or a stream playing in the background and not have it actually be in the background. It stays on top of whatever you're doing. And if you're interested in switching over to Opera GX as your main browser, not only is it free, but it's super easy to do. You just download it, install it, customize it with all of the things that you want to be on your browser, and import your bookmarks and settings from your previous browser, whether that's Chrome or Firefox or Edge. It only took me a matter of minutes to get it up and running and Boy, is the change noticeable from Chrome. It is so much faster. And it's also now available on mobile as well, so you can take it with you wherever you go. You can download it with the link in the description, and thank you again to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Who is Alex Chen? Well, she's our vessel, our protagonist for this entry. Starting a blank slate is always difficult, especially when the audience you're writing for already has a damn strong connection to early characters in the series. Living up to them or surpassing them is a big ask, and not a task that I envy even slightly. That said, True Colors builds up Alex in a spectacular way, giving us a deeper look into a protagonist like they've never truly done before. By the end of the game, we know all about Alex. Her past, her future, her here and now. That's helped by relationships, major events, and the core gameplay mechanic of this entry, Super Empathy, as I'm gonna call it. When we're first introduced to her, we're given an insight briefly into her past, a past we'd come to know incredibly well. Dr. Lin is concerned to learn Alex may be working close to people when she moves to Haven to be with her brother. So you'd be dealing with people? Maybe. Does your brother know about your... issues? Is that an official interview question, Dr. Lin? Alex is reluctant. You can tell this issue they talk about is something that bothers her. She wants to fit in, she wants to belong, and this is the first indication we're given of that. The start of her arc, if you will. An arc that plays in tandem with the main plot of the game in an intrinsic way. Alex has clearly had a difficult history with others, and you can see this in how isolated the opening makes her seem. Her eyes darting up and down, the camera stationary just focused on her, the way she's jumpy upon entering Haven for the first time. Alex isn't comfortable in most situations, and of course, 
We learn why. Due to her power, her super empathy, she feels the most intense emotions from those around her. It's uncontrollable. Without wanting to, she taps into others' emotions and takes them on herself. From anger and sadness to guilt and anxiety. It destroys her confidence in herself. But where that power truly comes from deep down is even more incredibly woven into her story. The game doesn't outright say it, but it seems to me that because of everything she's been through, her loss, her hurt, her isolation, in this fictional world where these things can happen, Alex is able to have deep empathy for all of those around her. Because of the pain she's endured, she has a power that allows her to feel everything everyone else feels. And at first, it appears that's a curse, something to make her life even more difficult than it already is. But over the course of the game, over the course of her arc, she learns it's not a curse, but a gift. A gift so that others don't need to hurt the way that she did. A gift so that she can help people and change the world around her for the better. You can change the world. Make it better. The loss of her brother Gabe, I believe, is the catalyst for this change in Alex to begin. The final straw that breaks her so that she can be built back up stronger and help her to find her place. For the first chapter, we see time and time again the emotions overwhelm Alex. She writes about previous times in her journal too. The anger from Steph in the record store, the anger from Mac in the apartment. It's too much, it causes her immense problems. But right at the end of chapter one, we see Alex use her power in a positive way for the first time. By tapping into Ethan's anxiety and fear, she's able to save his life. Although this is the moment in which we lose Gabe, this is also the moment where Alex takes her first step along her own character journey, learning she can help people by using her abilities. After losing Gabe, we see her multiple times help people in need, using Steph's sadness to raise her spirits, helping Eleanor with her Alzheimer's, helping Mac with his fear of Typhon. Chapter two is all about Alex learning that this power she has, like Gabe told her, is a superpower, something she can use to help people. This in turn links her to the people of Haven and to Steph and Ryan. Alex begins to find her place through what she can do and all of that happens because she and the town loses Gabe, a person everybody cared about, including the player. Despite not knowing him long, they plant enough seeds to have us give a shit, and that's pretty damn powerful. The actual moment, however, that solidifies her growth in this chapter is when she's speaking with Ryan. They're out in the woods, alone, and they share a moment together. A moment of joy. The first time Alex taps into an emotion that isn't negative. She relives memories of Gabe, times of laughter and happiness, and she's able to not only take on that emotion, but she seems to greatly amplify it for both people involved. She has a greater effect on positive emotions than she does on negative ones. Where anger causes her to lash out and fear causes her to be uneasy, joy causes her to feel elated and in turn boost the mood of the person projecting the joy in the first place. It's proof her power is certainly not a curse at all, and this is the moment that solidifies it for us, but also where Alex realises it herself, which is why she goes on to tell Steph, forming their friendship trio. These three characters come together because of what Alex found out about Mac regarding the core plot. Typhon are watching him and others. They know more than they let on and Mac confirmed it. If you've played the game, which I'm assuming you have if you're watching this, then you know what I'm talking about and I don't need to spell it out again. But the point is that these three, Alex, Steph and Ryan, they come together because all three of them cared for Gabe and all three of them have their suspicions on what truly went down. This allows a friendship to form between all of them. The relationships here that Alex forms is the start of her true sense of belonging. Previously, her powers have allowed her to begin a journey of self-belonging, who is she supposed to be? But now with Steph and Ryan, she's able to begin her journey of true belonging. Where is she supposed to be? Where in life is strange and before the storm, the relationships between Max and Chloe and Chloe and Rachel are pretty core, the latter being the whole point of that game. In True Colors, the relationship you can form between either Steph or Ryan isn't as core as before, but what it does do is push forward the central character journey for Alex. 
It exists really as an involved way to give you agency over how Alex reaches her final point. I'm going to be talking purely about Steph because that's the route that I chose, however it doesn't really matter which you go with. Becoming closer with Steph grows something in Alex that she's never truly had before, which is somebody to call home. Steph embodies that for Alex, and as we grow closer, so too does Alex's own sense of home. From playing with Steph on stage, to giving her the rose, to their kiss on the rooftop, every step has Alex internally considering her actions. We see her flourish as she discovers things she needed but didn't even know she wanted. Growing closer with Steph, however, isn't the only core growth to go hand in hand with the main narrative themes. Growing closer with Haven itself is integral to Alex's arc. Over the course of several days, you're able to help all of the people of the town. Mac, Riley, Charlotte, Eleanor, Pike, and so on. As well as a whole section in Chapter 3 being dedicated to helping Ethan. An entire LARP set up just for him. Alex thrives on helping others, something she never quite noticed before and something she was made for, which she slowly reveals to herself. The more helping she does, the more she feels it's her job to do so. To use her pain and hurt to help others. It's wonderfully executed and it all culminates in the festival. The moment where you don't even think about the core plot of the game, about taking down Typhon, but instead focus on character. Instead you focus on how far Alex has come, from being timid and alone to being confident on stage with Steph and surrounded by characters who love her and are thankful to her. And Alex also thankful for them, for giving her a sense of purpose and giving her a sense of home in the town and the people of that town. Now the core plot of this game is the conspiracy of the company Typhon. How did Gabe die? Why did Gabe die? And what is this company hiding? That however is merely a guise for the true purpose of this game and something that I loved. Yes, the mystery is compelling and yes, it's bloody engaging, but it's not until chapter 5 that we realise the game's true goal. The first half of this chapter is dedicated to exploring Alex's own past, her trauma, her mother's death, her father abandoning them, and being stuck in a foster home for most of her life. Never adopted, never loved, alone and completely without belonging. This is where we see Alex broken down to her core fundamentals. She's a girl who's had everything taken from her, someone who's been beaten down again and again and deserves more. Alex Chen is the point of this game. The entire thing is one big character study on the trauma one can go through and the transformation that could and ideally should occur there, turning pain into triumph. When we start this game, Alex has no idea who she is, what she wants or where she belongs. When we end this game, she knows all three. She has a home in Haven after years of wishing, she has belonging in Steph and Ryan and she has purpose to help people and change the world around her for the better. Which is why the conclusion of Typhon doesn't really matter. We never really find out how it all ends because the true ending is seeing where Alex lands, seeing her shift in confidence, seeing her reach her peak as she grows in herself, as she finds all the things she needs, as she finds her sense of belonging, her powers become more and more useful and more and more powerful. The more introspection we see, the more she's able to tap into others and this culminates in the final monologue to Jed, one of the most powerful moments in this entire damn franchise, potentially the most powerful. The writing is solid and the performance is just fantastic. It ends in a choice, however it never felt like a choice to me. To condemn Jed would betray the point, despite his awful actions, despite what a bad person he's been for giving him shows where Alex has finally landed. Her arc is complete, she's been on a full character journey and it's beautiful to see. Max definitely grows and so does Chloe, but Alex Chen's character journey is honestly on another level for me. Something that not only takes us along a hell of a set of story beats, but also has something incredible to say about life. To help others is to help yourself. To connect with others is to find belonging and give yourself a home. It's why no matter the choice at the very end, stay in Haven or travel with Steph, you can still complete that arc. It's the connections you make to people that give you home. Alex can always return to Haven, the people are always there, but she can always travel with Steph and that sense of home never fades there either. It's beautifully illustrated and entirely subtle. The main plot is great, but the overarching character exploration is infinitely my favourite part about this entire experience.
Home is something that you construct yourself. It's about your relationships and your shared history. True Colors displays that wonderfully, but it also showed me something else. Life is Strange has central themes, core themes that are always belonging, a sense of self and place. True Colors embodies that the best the franchise ever has. It melds both plots and character stories in an incredible way and imprints it on you so well. I feel it's unforgettable. I finished this game feeling a great sense of satisfaction and elation. I didn't feel that usual empty feeling you feel after a great story. I felt something new and that's when it dawned on me. Experiencing this game made me feel a sense of belonging too. I felt connected with Alex's arc and felt I'd found something by the end as well. So it didn't feel wrong to turn off my console and move on. It felt right. It felt like I'd learned something special and valuable and Alex's arc took me to the places I needed to be taken to. The game itself is so contained and so small but the story it tells and the emotion it invokes is in the major leagues for me. This game did something I won't soon be turning away from and I'm so pleased I went on this fantastic journey. He told me that home is in something you find. It's something you build. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I really appreciate it. This was something that I wrote pretty quickly um, compared to some of my other projects. It was just after finishing True Colors, it just it sparked something, man. It's When a game does that, it's very special. And I, I, I had to not let that feeling fade. I had to make a video, commemorate it, fucking marketing history there's there's the video it's done i had to i had to write this out and document just how the game made me feel and what it did for me and the way that the journey was constructed was just so fucking brilliant it's 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 a game like like no other man it, it really takes what life is strange is all about and just propels it so much further it, it, re it really did do bits and I, I, I hope, just hope everyone else has the same experience that I did with it. Um, if you want to check out my original playthrough of the game when I went through it the first time, I actually streamed it all over on Twitch. So if you want to see me stream anything in the future, whether it's the new Life is Strange DLC, future Life is Strange games, or, or other stuff, I'm, I'm doing all that over on Twitch. So that's linked down below. But I'll also link the VODs for you because I have a VODs channel and I have a another channel where I edit videos together. Um, the VODs are all on that channel um, for Life is Strange. So um, I will link the playlist for those down below if you want to see my initial first time reactions to the game. Um, and you can see sort of, you know, my reaction to the end and how I formed this sort of opinion and where the game took me. It was a really, really fun time. You know, there was some fucking funny moments. There was some emotional moments. There was some shark. It was a really good time. So definitely go check those out. I'll link all that below. Um, don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you to everybody on Patreon. Uh, I really appreciate the fuck out of everyone on Patreon. If you want to help support me further, if you really enjoyed this, you enjoy the content I put out, you can get it early access on Patreon, uh, as well as supporting me as well, and you get access to a bunch of other exclusive stuff over there too, so, you know, consider going over there, dropping a dollar, it'd help me out, and it'd also uh, get, get you access to, you know, a bunch of other content that you might be interested in, um, there's a ton of stuff going over on Patreon, so that's cool, um, I'm working on my Saints Row retrospective, that'll be out hopefully very soon, we will see, um, I, I will uh, keep you updated on that one on Twitter, but uh, it's going to take me a little bit, maybe maybe another week or two, um, just to work through it. I'm trying to make it as good as I possibly can. I don't want to rush through it. I want to, you know, take my time with each segment and really try and make sure that the video is paced well and it's put together well, because it's one of those big videos, so hopefully it'll be uh, really nice. But I hope you enjoyed this uh, video essay, nonetheless. Um, let me know your thoughts on uh, Life is Strange True Colors down in the comment section below, unless you're going to just say, wow, life is cringe, then in which case, maybe don't type out that comment, because you... <laughs> Whatever, type it anyway. <laughs> anyway, thanks guys so much, and I'll see you all next time for something new. Alright, catch you later. Bye-bye.